Are you that type of person that is driving around with a check engine light on and you think it's fine because it starts up good and runs good? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about it and discuss why you shouldn't be doing it. So if you're that person or you know someone that is that's been driving around with that check engine light on and they think it's not a big deal, right? Because the car starts and it also runs smooth down the road. I've actually had people say to me, oh, it's probably just the gas cap. Well, I've heard that a million times or an EVAP code. It's just needed for sticker. Well, let me say this one, I pulled the code with just a code reader, which you, if you don't have, you can pick up cheaply or you can just have someone pull the code for you. And that code happens to be loss of cam and crank signal. Well, you're playing with fire here because you could be stuck at the grocery store, at school, at work, and that's going to just excessively crank. This was kind enough to give you the fair warning, but you didn't pay attention to it. You just said, eh, it's fine. It starts up and it runs, and I'm just going to ignore it. Well, it's better off knowing what the code is and how to tackle it. It's a warning light for a reason. It's warning you, so don't put that off. It's nice to know what it is and how you're going to tackle it and deal with it than just to keep putting it off. So it might cost you more than it would have cost just to fix it. Don't forget to check out 1A Auto because we sell all the parts for your needs. So the cool thing is, is that that code actually really does exist on this vehicle we have in the shop. So it runs great, it starts up, but that check engine light's on and they're not gonna ignore it any longer. So we're gonna get into why it does that. Now a crank and a cam sensor signal, lack of or no start, those are have to do with nowadays cars, like modern cars, probably over 100% on the road, that have direct ignition, which means a direct coil ignition per cylinder or one big coil pack. The old school days was a distributor, and that's where the signal came from. It went up the drive shaft and ignited each cylinder as that shaft spun from the crank. So that's not what we have anymore nowadays. We actually take a signal from the crank of the cam, and they have to be in sync. When they're in sync, everything's perfect. That vehicle wants to run, start, and everything's smooth. So what it runs off nowadays is the timing belt timing. So let's say you've never had that engine light, but you had a timing belt done maintenance wise, and now that light's on, but it still starts up every time. Maybe that timing belt's off timing, and a sample of it is right here. And if they're one tooth off, it might run, but you're gonna hit that code because they're not in sync. So here's a typical crank sensor, and we got ours from 1AAuto.com. And I'm going to lift this vehicle up, and I'm going to get to the location of this particular engine and where it's located. And I'm going to do some quick little visual testing way before I pull out any diagnostic equipment. I like to do everything real basic at first, because if the obvious is obvious, then we don't need to do the big guns, right? Let's not break out that diagnostic. These are known for problems, not just on this car, but on a lot of vehicles. So... Let's get into it. Let's raise it up. Let's find the location of this and let's get into it. So now that we've lifted the Jeep up, and I said Jeep, yeah, I gave it away. I think you knew what it was. So now that we lifted the vehicle up, the location of that crank sensor is right here next to the oil filter. And there's something else I noticed while I'm, before I start doing any sort of diagnosis, guess what? That crank sensor is shiny brand new. Someone's already put a new one in. Now, why do we have that code again? Well, we can go deeper into it, but I also noticed another thing. Up on top, someone wrote on one of the housings, timing belt changed. It was about 23,000 miles ago. So when I talked earlier about direct ignition and how the timing belt or chain has to be in proper sequence, if it's one tooth off, then it's going to set a code. Ugh, we might have that situation here. I am going to might end up having to take that timing cover off and checking the actual setting for everything. Well, it's not a big deal, it's kind of fun. You get into it, it's kind of like a mystery, right? But first I'm gonna do is disconnect that connector and I'm gonna look at the connector because if I have a bad wire, that's gonna be the whole problem. Now I disconnected that connector. What do I see? I see a little bit of shininess in there, like an oil deposit. Well, the oil filter is here. It's not the greatest design, so oil can get into that harness, which can cause a lot of issues but I'm probably gonna lower it to look at the harness up there closer. But let's take this sensor out and let's see what we see with that. So now that I brought it over to the bench here, we can really look at it. And yeah, I'm confirming what I thought. It is fairly new. This is a new 
clip here, new sensor. Um, you can tell it hasn't been in for a long time. Oil out here is pretty normal because it goes into the block, so it's going to get oil on it. But what I did notice is look on the inside. Look on the inside of that connector. That has oil in it. It should be there. That should be nice and dry. Now, I did notice oil already on the harness end. So is it from the oil filter? Or could it be possibly that this sensor has a pinhole in it and the oil from the block is going through the inside of the sensor and it's following out the connection? So what I'm going to do before I just keep replacing parts and doing that kind of thing, I think I'm going to take the cover off the timing chain or timing belt in this case. I'm going to take that cover off and I'm going to check these markings. I want to make sure that they'll, they are right on where they should be so that I'm not chasing my tail, as they say, or replacing parts I don't need. All right, so like that, magic. I took everything out of the way for you. Here is the cam sensor. It's located right here. And it, it's out in the open. It just goes through the back. And it's going to take up a sequence on the back of this cam sprocket. And that's where it gets its pulse like from. And then I took the top of the timing cover off so that you could see the timing marks that I'm talking about. Now, that cam sensor happens to be shiny brand new. So I've got a great mystery here on my hands. I've got two sensors that are brand new, a cam sensor and a crank sensor. Timing belt that was supposedly done. Um, it looks like it's been done, so I'm going to top dead center this. And we're going to see if the markings all line up. So I'm just going to turn it over, keep turning it until I get the markings lined up. And a quick reference, I know I'm coming around because I can see it. I can also feel the compression. I'm going to take the number one spark plug out so I can make sure I'm on top dead center. Because if not, I have to take that bottom crank off to confirm that lines up when the cam sprockets line up. So here we go. It's nice and easy right there. I'm going to take this number one plug wire off, pull the spark plug, and get top dead center on compression stroke. So not everybody has a compression tester at home, so I'm going to show you another quick trick. So this is a deep cylinder, so I'm putting two quarter inch extensions together and slowly dropping it down in the hole and resting it right on the top of that piston. And what I'm going to be looking for is for this to go up and down and then I'm going to level it out when this levels out and that tells me that's top dead center. All right, so now we can kind of hear the whistling, so that's the compression of the piston going up. We're going to top dead center this, keeping an eye on this extension. I want it to come up and stop before it moves kind of in a sequence. Now here are my two marks. I don't want to be compromised by watching those, so I'm going to watch the actual extension. I'm going to watch where it peeks out and kind of starts to go back a little. I'm going to just give it a quick click, go back down until it is at its highest peak. And <laughs> I kind of can see here that I think this thing is a tooth off. Right there it's lined up. And if you feel this, it didn't really move. See that? That's a dead spot. Being a dead spot. That confirms to me that that is pretty much top dead center. It's not severe to the point that I'd be like, oh, that's the major problem here. We, uh, I'm going to say that they did a good job, but to confirm it 110%, I got to take that crank off and look at that bottom timing mark and confirm that these are all lined up to confirm that these are not out of sequence. So I have the old sensor here and the brand new one, and it's always a good practice to ohm things out. I just want to check the resistance. That's all I want to do. I'm not even going to go bother checking what the resistance is supposed to be and what it's in line, because first I want to see if it's completely out of range. So here's the old one, 360.2, and basically I'm putting on the two outer prongs. That's all I want to do. I want to just check and see if they have anything to do with each other. And here's the new one, 1.28. Look at that. So that is a huge jump. So this is definitely no good. I have to replace it. Probably going to be from that oil soaking in there. It probably shorted out inside the resistance. 
So we definitely have a problem with that, but we don't want it to repeat with this. So we're going to clean, get some dielectric cleaner, like electric cleaner, and we're going to clean the plug end on that harness, and uh, we'll install our new one, and then continue on checking the timing. All right, so now from the front we can see that our two cam marks are lined up, and I'm going to take a crayon, and I'm going to confirm that they're right in place. Down on that crank, you'll see a little white dot right here. That's like a diamond. And that's supposed to mark up right here with the block, which is a diamond punch out. So it all looks pretty good. So before I install the new sensor, I'm going to clean this connector with electrical cleaner. And it's just a spray, aerosol spray. It won't damage the plastic or short anything out. And it takes all that oil out of there. We'll let that air dry. And I'll probably get a little air gun and blow it through. If you don't have an air compressor, then let it air dry. But I'm going to just blow a little bit of air through there. Now we can get the sensor, install it, and torque it down. So I'm pretty sure the crank sensor was at fault, especially from that oil shorting it out. And the bench test with that ohm meter against the new one to the old one definitely confirms that that had a problem to it, right? Now you're not going to need to check your timing like I did. It was just a little insight because I have notes under this hood that someone did a timing belt recently. And that, as a professional of me, I wanted to confirm that they put that timing right on. Because if they didn't, that code will come up too. So if you didn't have maintenance done recently or an engine repair that detailed, then don't worry too much about that. You just need to worry about the sensors and whether you, which one you need to replace, one or two, because they do work together. Sometimes you might need to do both, the cam and the crank at the same time. Like I said though, I'm confident that's what the problem was. So let's clear the code and start this up and let's hope that engine lights off. So now we're gonna hook up our little code reader. We're gonna clear the code and then we're gonna start it up and see if that engine light comes right back on. If it does, then we could have an electrical issue or a harness issue or a PCM but I'm pretty confident it's not going to. So go, let's go ahead and clear the code and we'll start her up. All right, so the code's cleared. Let's start it up and let's see how it sounds. Let's hope that engine light doesn't come back on. No check engine light. We'll keep an eye on it and we'll go from there. Well, I hope I enlightened about a check engine light, how you really shouldn't ignore it and it could have a bigger meaning other than a simple gas cap. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. It turns on all your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.